I had recently been thinking about a time that I was up in, um, I was in Maslin, Ohio, and I was at a high school, and uh, you know, school was shut down that day. It was a day in May, and, and I asked why, and the coach said it because we had our, I think it was our fifth or sixth suicide in, in the last year. I think it's been therapeutic for us to go through this process, therapeutic for Ryan to go through this process, um, and I think it's a good process for our kids to go to as well. One in five kids is diagnosed with a mental health condition and only 50% of those kids are getting treatment. Having Ryan come out and tell his, his personal story gives so much more authenticity and heart to all of this. On Our Sleeves is a movement that we have created to really help us break the stigma around pediatric mental health mental illness. Um, we are, it's really built on three legs. We're, we're reaching out with advocacy efforts, we're reaching out with fundraising efforts and education efforts. In June, you announced your partnership with uh, Nationwide Children's Hospital and you stood up at a press conference and spoke publicly for the first time about your father's suicide. Growing up, I didn't quite understand what, what, what all went down. And then as I get older, I start to realize that, that it was a sickness and that these, you know, there's people out there that need help. What was that like, Ryan? Well, it was, it was something that uh, was probably a long time coming. When you step into the, the spotlight of being the head coach at Ohio State, you know, you, you feel that exposure on a daily basis. And, um, you know, I, I'm not ashamed of it. Um, I know my family's not ashamed of it. I think it was a courageous thing for him to do. Um, I, th I don't think it was as easy um, as he, as it came off to be, um, but, I think he, at the end, wanted to do it. I think he felt good about doing it. And I think he's at the point where his life, it, in his life, that he knows he has a platform. Ryan, can you walk me through from when you were nine years old, when your father committed suicide, to coming to that realization, the, the, the gamut of emotions that you ran through before you, you gained this perspective that it, it was a sickness that your that your father was dealing. Yeah, when you're young, it's hard, you know, and you have to grow up fast. When you're nine years old, and um, you know, you feel anger, you feel sadness, you feel um, you know animosity, you feel a lot of different things. But then again, as you get older, and you start to see that uh, this is something that's not um, unique to to you, is that it gets it's gone on everywhere. It's, it's gone all over the country, and and now we're seeing it happen more and more at, at the younger age, and so for adolescents and teenagers, and so. Uh, just something that really gives you a lot of, a lot of thought and, and why is that going on? You know, what I've learned through this whole process with On Our Sleeves and really trying to get out there and get in front of this pediatric mental illness crisis that our country is in, um, I've heard a lot of stories. And when Ryan shared that his dad um, had suffered from a mental, mental illness, you know, it was you know, it was just one more conversation that I had had that, you know, kind of solidified the need for bringing this to the forefront in conversation. You know, your son RJ is 11, mm -hmm. and before you went public with this, Ryan had to have a conversation with him about his grandfather, mm -hmm. who he'd never met. Mm -hmm. um, what was that conversation like for, for Ryan and for RJ? I'm an emotional person, so I cry over everything, and Ryan was like, let me take this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think when you're, when you're a father, you know, you, you, you kind of are worried about having those conversations. It's because, you know, you feel like if you bring it up, um, it's uncomfortable, and, um, but I think that it, it's very healthy. We're gonna be married 15 years, and it's something that, um, as the years got on, I wanted to be more vocal about it and have an open relationship with our children and just stress the importance of sharing emotions and telling the kids that it's okay not to feel okay um, and to talk about it. What do you think it says about Ryan that who he admittedly is not a big emoter, like he's not a sit around talking about feelings person, has been vulnerable and, and revealed this about himself? Mm -hmm. I think that you can't talk to your team or tell you know a group of young men what they should be doing if you're not willing to do it yourself. I think the whole world of college football is kind of changing. I think the kids these days are different. They don't really respond well, you know, to that fear. Um, so, and, you know, I just hear Ryan say a lot that, you know, what wouldn't you do for someone that you love? Mom, do you have passion? Oh, yeah. I said you have love. do you have passion? Yeah. Ryan, last week, uh, one of your uh, linemen, B.B. Landers, came out and talked about his own struggles with, with, men with mental health. What did that mean to you? 
Well, I, I think it shows now that there's an environment that we're creating that it's okay to talk about it. Because once you talk about something, usually you feel better about it anyways. And trying to hide it and suppress it isn't going to help anybody. And, and I've even seen just, you know, when you, since he's uh, come out and said that, I've seen, you know, a hop in his step, and uh, I think he feels good about that. And the, the thing that's amazing is he's got a team then and a family that want to support him. Ryan, since you made this announcement in June, how has it helped you with coaching your players and connecting with them? I think they feel like they can, they can come up to me at any time uh, with any kind of question, something that's on their mind. I think they feel like, uh, you know, I'm approachable. In recruiting, we tell them we're going to take care of their kid. We tell them we're going to take care of them and develop them academically after football in all these areas but also mentally and emotionally and so uh, if we're going to say that in recruiting we have to back it up. The Date family has committed a hundred thousand dollars to this and their funds going to go to um, help families uh, and to support research and education. You know research is the biggest component of all of this. There's a couple people that might hold um, a spot have a little bit more clout than the head football coach at Ohio State but you know his voice will be heard. You don't have a lot of memories from your father growing up. Uh, do you feel like this is a way to honor his legacy, what you and your family are doing? Yeah, yeah, I do. I never really thought about that when I was younger, about doing it this way, but uh, I do. I think that this is a way you know, to turn a negative into a positive. And I think sometimes the more vulnerable you get, uh, the more people are willing to come to you and ask for help. Is the hope someday, Nina, that physical health, which is often discussed, uh, mental health is discussed in the same plane? I have three children and I just know there's a lot of parents that are afraid to talk about whether their son is um, have anxiety or they're depressed. Um, they feel ashamed, they feel like their child is weak, they feel like bad parents. Um, these same parents have no problem calling and saying my kid has the flu um, or has an ear infection. Um, so we kind of have to treat it the same, you know. Five, ten years from now as this program builds and gets momentum and word spreads, what do you hope to accomplish? Well, I hope we win a lot of games. Uh, that's part of the job at Ohio State. <laughs> yeah. You got to win. Uh, that's that's number one when you wake up in the morning. Uh, but you want to have a, you want to have a bigger impact than that when you're when you're done. You want to leave a legacy behind. You want to make change. Um, and I think that's part of life. And along the way, if we can build this thing up and win a bunch of games, you know, hope to be here for the next 10 to 20 years.